Today we are making sponge jam tarts, or sometimes they're called maids of honor. So we have a layer of pastry around the outside, we have a little dollop of jam in that, and then we have it topped with sponge. Okay, so when you cut into it, as you see on the PowerPoint, you should have layers of pastry, jam, and sponge. Okay, now this combines lots of different skills we've looked at. So we're gonna be using the rubbing in method for this. We talked about last week, um, why the rubbing in method is important. We're gonna be using that in the pastry. If you guys haven't made pastry before, and making pastry is a really good skill to have, going through key stage three and into key stage four of food. Um, we're also gonna be making sponge. Now we made sponges in year seven, we made cupcakes. Um, so you guys should be pretty uh, good at doing that. So pastry and sponge combined together in one recipe. So the first thing we're gonna to do today is get your pastry ready. So it's a similar method to how we made scones. So we want butter and flour in our mixing bowls. So on your recipes, I've asked you to use 50 grams of butter. Now you'll see on your ingredients list from last week, I combined the measurements for butter and flour. On the PowerPoint, I've split it because we need some butter for the pastry and some butter for the sponge. Okay, so we're doing the pastry first. So 50 grams of butter is going in the measuring jar. Now you can double this recipe if you want. This is probably gonna make about six miniature sponge jam tarts. Um, like I said, you can double it if you've got lots more people at home. Now for the flour, it's just plain flour. Okay, and we're using 100 grams. So a really important point with pastry and the measurement of pastry is with short crust, However much flour you have, you have half the amount of butter. Okay, that is a really good way of remembering how to get perfect pastry. The ratio is two to one. Two flour, one butter. So I've got 100 grams of flour, so I'm using 50 grams of butter. Okay, what you're gonna do then once that's in, make sure your butter should be nice and cold. You're then gonna carry out your rubbing in method, just like we did in year seven with scones. So, we are picking the butter and the flour up and we're rubbing it in our fingertips. Okay, we are not squishing everything together. Okay, you must rub. You can lift the flour up as you do it. Just aerates it a little bit. Then make your pastry a little bit lighter. Okay, and rub all that butter in. It'll take a little while if your butter's really cold and your fingers may start to ache a little bit. But you must keep going until we get the texture of breadcrumbs. So in our live lesson last week, we looked at why the rubbing in method was important and lots of you seem to be a little bit, little bit stuck with it. And we talk about this a lot because it's so important in food. So what we're doing here is we are coating the flour with a fat, the fat being the butter. What that's gonna do is it's gonna lock in the gluten and it will shorten those gluten strands. We don't want gluten, okay? If we had lots of glu oops, if we didn't do this stage and we added water directly to this, what would happen is our pastry would be really stretchy and elastic. We don't want that, okay? We want a nice crumbly texture on the pastry, so we must keep the gluten short. So as we said last week, the rubbing in method shortens the gluten, and that's useful for pastry and scones okay so you want to keep going if you're not sure if you've got all the butter you give your mixing bowl a little shake the big lumps of butter will come to the top what you might find at this stage is your flour might already be clumping together in a big ball that happened in some lessons um, before we went on lockdown now the problem with that was either you had far too much butter in there you didn't weigh it properly or your butter might have been really warm, okay, and it's coated all of the flour together. If at this stage you find you've got just a big ball of flour without adding any liquid, just add a sprinkle more flour, rub that in, and it will um, crumble back down again, okay? So this is the texture you're looking for. Okay, just like breadcrumbs. You'll see the colour will change a little bit as well. It will go kind of a yellowy sort of colour. Okay. Now we can add our water. So you need to make sure your water is nice and cold. Okay, as cold, the colder the better. 
And then you're going to add, oh, on my PowerPoint, I just said a small amount of water. I would suggest you start with a table, uh, a teaspoon. Start small, and then you can always add more. If you dollop all of this water in, you're going to have a right mess on your hands, okay? So, just start with a teaspoon, maybe two teaspoons, and mix that in. It won't take a lot, it will come together really, really quickly. Okay, and then use your hand like we did for scones, and start bringing it together. See, two teaspoons of water, and it's already started to come together. Now, it's not quite holding itself, so I'm just gonna add maybe half a teaspoon. If at this stage it's really wet and there's a right mess going on, you're gonna to have to add more flour. But be aware, if you start adding more flour, um, then your ratio of butter to flour, that two to one ratio, because you're not adding more butter, is gonna be out of whack, okay? So try to avoid adding more flour if possible. So, you want the texture a texture that looks like this. Okay, you can see my hands are not really, really dirty. It's not like loads of mushy flour falling off of them. And if we take my thumb and my forefinger and squeeze the pastry, okay, it's not all crumbling to pieces and it's not making my hands mucky. So let's get that off of there. Roll that into a ball. And then you're gonna put this in the fridge for a little while, okay? Now that's only a small amount of pastry. That will be enough to do six little ones. Um, you can obviously double the recipe if you want to. So get this wrapped up. Hello again, you eight. So my pastry's done and chilling in, the, chilling in the fridge. Now it's time to get on with the um, sponge. So for the sponge, we did this, it's the same process that we used last year. Um, for making cupcakes. So we're gonna start with butter and sugar and carry out the creamy method. So you want 50 grams of sugar in your mixing bowl. Okay, if you're doubling, if you're making more, obviously you want 100 grams. And then you want 50 grams of butter. So remember, your butter wants to be nice and soft. If you remember from last year, with some of your cupcakes, when you brought your butter in, it was really hard and it took forever to cream the two ingredients together. So, 50 grams of butter. Get that in there. And then, that's too much. You want your spatula. And then you're going to cream these two together, okay? So just smush in the flour, sorry, the sugar and the butter into the sides of the bowl until they are light and fluffy. Now, this process of creaming, we've looked at this in theory lessons. The reason we do this cream, creaming stage is to aerate our sponge. Okay, so doing this helps air get into our mixture. Now we talked about last year how air is a really important ingredient in baking. It's not something we can add in, like by measuring in. We need to put it in, okay, mechanically. So creaming the butter and sugar together is aerating my sponge. So you are done when you can't see any sugar knocking around in the bowl and your mixture is light and fluffy, kind of looks like vanilla ice cream, yeah? So, as I said, this aerates the mixture and it also dissolves the sugar. If we didn't do that, what might happen is the sugar might stay quite grainy um, and give you a grainy texture in your, in your sponge, which we don't want. Once you are creamed, you wanna add an egg. If you are doubling, you wanna add two eggs. Then you're just going to beat that egg in to the butter and sugar. Exactly like we did last year. 
So beating this in again is also adding air into that mixture. You want this sponge to be light and fluffy. It only gets light and fluffy if we've got lots of air in there. Okay, so beat it really, really well. Now it might not look very appetizing at this point. Okay, it might look a little bit lumpy and a little bit curdly. As soon as we add flour, that will bring the mixture back together again. Okay, so make sure the egg is well beaten. I don't even see everybody come in then. Then we can add our plain flour. Now if you've got self-raising flour, you can use that, that's absolutely fine. But I've got plain flour already out and I've got some baking powder here. So I'm just going to use these instead. Self-raising flour is just plain flour with a bit of baking powder in it. So, 50 grams of plain flour. Okay. And then I'm also going to put in my little bit of baking powder. So I've asked for a quarter of a teaspoon. You only want a little bit of baking powder in there. If you put in too much, it's going to make your sponge taste. It's really hard to describe, but it will make your sponge taste like you've eaten washing powder, which, not that I'm eating washing powder, but it has that weird kind of flavour left over in the tongue. It tastes a bit soapy. So only put a little bit in, please. It also makes sure your sponge doesn't go crazy in the oven and overtakes everything. Just a little bit. You then fold this flour in. Okay, so don't go crazy with it, because otherwise all the air that you've worked so hard to put in is going to be knocked out. Just going to fold it in gently, so around your mixture, your bowl, and then cut through. Okay, and you end up with a little cake batter that looks a little bit like that. Now I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla to this. Just a capful will be fine. And then mix that in. Our next step is to roll the pastry out. So you want a little bit of flour on your work surface. Just a little bit, please. If you put too much on there, it's going to dry your pastry out. And then you want to take your pastry. Okay. Just give it a little knead in your hand to try and warm it up a little bit. You might find it's quite brittle if you've had it in the fridge for ages. Mine's quite brittle because it's been in my free, well, not freezing cold fridges, but very cold fridges for quite a while. You may just want to leave it on the side for a little bit to warm up slightly. It's going to be easier to roll out then. So, little ball, rolling pin, and just gently start rolling this pastry out. We want it quite thin because we want to have enough space for the jam and the sponge to sit in there. Okay, but be aware the thinner you have it, the more delicate the pastry is. Okay, so pastry is not something we can be really heavy handed with. We need to use delicacy when working with this piece. And now you can see I'm not picking it up and farting about with it too much. I'm literally just turning it every now and again. So I can try and make a nice even shape. It doesn't have to be a circle, it doesn't have to be a rectangle, just as long as it's nice and thin. So that will probably do it. Now, if you want to pick your pastry up, instead of just picking it up like this, okay, because it's too heavy and it's gonna break, what I suggest you do is put your rolling pin on the top, roll the pastry over the top, and then you can lift it up. Okay, so this is how thin we're looking for with your pastry. Okay, so probably about the thickness of a 10 pence coin. Uh, then you want a bun tin and a cutter. Okay, it doesn't matter what size you use. Traditionally, they would use the fluted side for sweet things and the flat side for savoury things. But I'm not that traditional, so I'm not bothered what size you use. I'm going to use the flat side because I'm a maverick. Okay, so cut it out and then you're just going to gently pop your pastry into your bunting. Now if you haven't got an individual bunting like this and you've only got a big one, you just need to put all of that pastry into the tin. Okay. Now it might crack, mine's just cracked a little bit. We don't want cracks really. 
So what you can do is just I'll do a bit of patchwork with it and push the pastry back together. Okay, you could take like a little bit of excess and push that into the sides. Okay, make sure it's pushed all the way into the tin so we get a good shape. You can then pick this up and re-roll it if you want to, um, but be aware the more you do that, the harder the pastry becomes to work with. Okay, it becomes more and more brittle. So try and handle it as little as possible. Just gonna do two more maybe. Oh, I knew I was gonna do that. That's why I moved it and I did it anyway. Thank you, miss. See, look, now this, I don't know if you can tell, but my pastry is getting already quite tough to work with. Let's just do one more. There we go, put that in. Then we can start filling with some jam. So it doesn't matter what flavour jam you have, whatever you like. The important thing to remember is not to use too much of it. So although it won't look like a lot in the bottom, I suggest you just use about half a teaspoon. Okay, in the oven, this jam is gonna um, melt out a little bit and then cover more of the pastry case. If you put too much in, like that, just done, um, the jam will bubble up and over the top of the sponge, which then they won't be the prettiest things in the world. Okay, we want these to look quite neat. So just a little bit of jam in the bottom is fine. And then you want your sponge back. Okay, and then I'm gonna use a tablespoon. And then I'm gonna dollop that sponge mixture just on top of the jam. Okay, now it doesn't need to be all the way full up, it just needs to be enough in there to cover the jam. Don't forget we've got baking powder in there, which is going to help the, the sponge rise. So just a little bit. Another thing that will happen if you put far too much jam in, is when it does eventually boil in the oven, it's going to boil over the top of the pastry and it's going to cook itself to the pastry, uh, the tin, which is always a nightmare because then they all get stuck. Okay, so try to keep that jam hidden away. A little jammy surprise. Okay. So what we have then is our pastry, our jam is hidden underneath there, and then our sponge has just gone on top. They then go into the oven at 200 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes, okay, until they're nice and golden brown. So, year eight, my um, sponge tarts have been in the oven, I've taken them out, I've let them cool, that's why I can handle them. Um, and what we've got, I've taken them out when the sponge is cooked, so you want a nice light golden brown colour on top. You could shove a knife in or a skewer, very shallow, and see if it comes up clean. And okay, what we can see then, is let's just break one of these in half so we can see i haven't done that very neatly okay i didn't do it with a knife that's the problem i did it with a fork um what we end up with is our thin layer of pastry at the bottom our jam dollop in the middle there and then uh our, our sponge on top now it's in the dollop because i put it in in the dollop if you wanted to smear it across the bottom of that pastry to get a thinner layer then you can do that as well these don't have to be filled with jam. You could fill these with Nutella. How good would that be? Oh, Nutella could go in the bottom of there. That'd be nice. Um, but there we go. Okay, sponge jam tarts. Try and make them a bit neater than mine. Mine actually, aren't actually that neat. I'll try to rush mine a little bit. Okay, so you've got pastry using the rubbing in method to shorten the gluten to give that nice crumbly texture. And then you've got creaming to aerate our sponge and give a nice soft sponge mixture. If you make these, pay attention to the two different textures. Doing those two different methods is what gives those two different textures, okay? See you very shortly. Bye-bye.